it's actually it's a lot further than it seems. Oh, I should turn here, right? Mm -hmm. So, Kaya, where are we now? Now we are turning from this is Puti Puti Junction. Uh huh takes you to Ndabangulu, but before you get there, that's my to be my village on the left. And um, it's, it's about 30 minutes from Mount Frey, and, and that way, it's Mount Elif, which is 12 minutes away from here. Eastern Cape? Yeah. Very, very close, actually, to, to, KZ, to the border of KZN. What do Barack Obama and Coca-Cola have in common with a cattle herding boy from the tiny village of Dukini in the Eastern Cape? How does a child from this tiny community manage to win some of the most prestigious advertising awards in the world? Dukini has little access to the outside world, but somehow Kaya Langa broke the mold and went on to interview Barack Obama and emerge as the creative force behind some of the biggest brands in the world, like Coca-Cola and Nando's. Kaya Langa has a remarkable story, and he's one of my favorite human beings. Today, we've traveled all the way back to Kaya's birthplace to share some of his stories, humor, and wisdom. So when you're coming back here to visit family, there's a family function, Konum Gidi. Obviously, the memories of you growing up here start hitting you now. Oh, man. On this road. Oh, they do. They absolutely, I used to, you know, that's, that's why I almost lost a cow. <laughs> or, you know, that nostalgia, things that I just miss and I remember. All right, welcome to Edukin. 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 Yeah, Edukin. Kaya is currently the marketing manager for Rain, a brand new high-speed internet provider. Unlike most marketing moguls, his journey didn't start in a corner office and his life story has inspired many South Africans across every color and creed. From herding cows and minding his grandfather's sheep as a boy to gaining a massive, powerful social media following, Kaya has penned three award-winning autobiographies chronicling his life stories, including, to quote myself, and his latest publication, these things really do happen to me. And you know what? They really, really do. From being homeless on the streets of Cape Town and never formally finishing his studies at Triple A School of Advertising because of financial constraints, to coming up with one of the most iconic campaigns in the history of Coca-Cola, Kaya's unparalleled drive and tenacity has cemented him as one of the biggest names in advertising, even though he started down that road armed with only his wit, humor, and a smile that would make most Hollywood A-listers jealous. You know, people say, let's go to grassroot levels. Yeah. We literally have taken it to grassroot <laughs> yeah, levels. No, look, look, look. This... Look there, <laughs> grass. <laughs> there, there's proof. There's proof. Look, it's beautiful. Yes. And I understand when people say, you know, the clearest your mind will ever be is when you find yourself in, in, in a situation like this. But if you grow up here, you, you don't think like that. And you know that whole thing where, talk, like, I need to go somewhere to find myself. I think it's, um, it's, like, it's almost like a strange concept. It's, yeah. It's, it's not something that, that I can relate to because this is just home. It's what I've always known, like, all my life. Mm. So I, I don't know if, like, I always happen to find myself without knowing that I'm trying to find myself. But because, I like that, that mm. you find yourself when you were not necessarily looking for yourself because yeah. it means that you could find yourself uh, in the grocery store whilst you're taking the milk. You're like, <laughs> oh my word, yeah. <laughs> lactose yeah. intolerant. It means, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You know, then you realize yeah. some things. Are, so you're never looking for a place where you're like, let me be one, let yeah. me grow. You're just constantly growing. No, because, you know, and I also think the way we, we grew up, I think, as kids, yeah. like, uh, it's like, there was not that thing where it's like, you know what, I need my space. <laughs> it was like, what do you mean you need your space? Please tell your mother. <laughs> Please tell your black mother you need space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> space where? Or, or go to your room. What? This you is share your room. room with six sh- people. Exactly. So, so you, exactly. Guys, I'm going to our room. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Nobody come in. <laughs> I'm Nobody storming off in. to our room to yeah, think. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. How does a, a, a child from, from Mount Elif to Kenny? Think of copywriting. You don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, you don't think about it. I think because, like, literally, when you hear, you just there are few options that you know. It's like, oh, you know that there's a umfundi, isn't it? Yes. And probably the most respected member of the community because, I mean, there used to be a mission house here, which is mm-hmm. not there anymore. Um, and then itishara because yes. you know there are also 
they're probably the second most respected people like in the community. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, I think after that, uh, is then you hear about doctors and lawyers. But being a doctor and a lawyer just seemed almost impossible because... It was something white people did. Yeah, and, and also, like, you you didn't know anybody and, who was and, a doctor. And they're almost an anomaly. So, exactly. you know, he's a doctor, but his grandfather owned six shops. Exactly. And, and you're like, well, my grandfather doesn't yeah. own one shop, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. I'm nowhere near this doctor it's, thing. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So you never think about it. And so, and what you knew back then was, like, as again, most of the men at the time here in this village were... They went to work in Joburg in the mines. That's what they did. A lot of them actually worked in Maragana. Um, so it's a, it's a mine, you can call it like, it's almost like a mining village, if you will. And because they would go and there was this thing called Deba. It was a recruitment agency for mine workers. Oh, wow, yes. they had that? They had it. So you have to go to town, to a Deba, where you sign in and then ship you off to different mines. You wait your turn and then you get shipped yeah. And that, that then is the level of success. Exactly. That you've made and it And for me, that's what I thought, like, literally, that's what I thought I was going to become. I was going to grow up and go and work in the mines because those guys came back home twice a year. So it was just around March and in December, around Christmas. Mm. And they came back with sweets. They came back with new clothes. And you're like, wow. Okay, balling out of balling, control. They're balling out of control. Kind of gives another meaning to gold diggers. <laughs> <laughs> what is that you, doing? You're gold digging yeah, the gold diggers. <laughs> exactly. No, but literally, it was amazing. That's what he wanted to do. And to such, to such an extent that um, I'll never forget my grandmother would always say to me, if she saw me pick up something like an, a heavy object, oh, you're strong. Yeah. You know, you're ready to work in the mines. Yeah. It's a compliment. Yes. It's a compliment. It was a compliment. But, and you wanted to show that, yeah, I am ready to go work in the mines. But, because that's all you knew. Kaya's mom did everything in her power to make sure that he attended the best school she could possibly afford. Instead of sending him to the local school in the rural areas, she sent him to Hudson Primary after they moved to Mdanzane. He learned to speak English very quickly in the former Model C school and his posh English soon became a running joke when he returned home to Dukini for holidays. Kaya developed a love for reading early on and spent a lot of time in the library at the school learning about life. He cites this insatiable appetite for reading as one of the key things that helped him make the leap into copywriting and ultimately advertising. He attended high school at Hudson Park and after finishing matric, he knew that his dream of attending the AAA School of Advertising he thought that it was out of reach. Coming from a home with three siblings and a single mother, there was no money for tuition. His mom, however, wasn't going to let it go that easily. She found a way to get him an interview at AAA, and he was sent packing to Cape Town. The famous story goes that applications had already closed. But after showing AAA his portfolio, Kaya was allowed to do a late entry application. Students would usually get a few months to complete the application because it required a bunch of extra projects. Kaya did it over one weekend, and the school was so impressed with his work that they made a space for him in the already full first year's class. So when you get to AAA, then you, you see it branching off. Yes. You see this tree, which is advertising, yes. and then you see the different branch exactly. that then you can, you can and occupy. For me, I was like, because I, I did art, and I was good at art, I was like, I'll be an art director. That's what I'll do. But then when I get my first job, funny enough, that's when, instead of being an art director, I was like, you know what, I'll do copywriting. Because when I, my copywriting skills were very distant when I was at college, even mm. though I was not a copywriter. And the second thing that happened was that during uh, my chat with a senior guy in this ad agency, he told me that, well, copywriters make a bit more money than art directors. And number two, <laughs> they don't work as long. I was like, I'm doing that. Oh! <laughs> there we go. There we go. Kaya fell in love with the digital world the first time he had access to the internet. In 2006, Kaya logged in and created his own YouTube channel. He soon amassed a huge following as one of the first African YouTubers, with even the founders reaching out to him to compliment him on his videos. It wasn't long afterwards that YouTube asked whether he would participate in an online interview they had set up for a senator from Chicago. They were going to take questions from selected YouTubers from across the world and really wanted an African perspective to the interview. That young senator was Barack Obama. And Kaya ended up posing a question to him during his presidential campaign. Kaya's YouTube days are long gone, but he's still very active on Twitter with over 400,000 followers enjoying his quirky humor 
and thoughtful conversations. When do you realize that you're documenting your life? 